hello everyone and welcome to our online closeout session well this session always happens as a physical session or a physical class um, however due to the present um, crisis happening right now we decided to move it online definitely um, we are still going to be moving uh, we are still going to do this again when we meet in a physical class however i would like us to use or apply the lessons of today to what we are going to be doing for the next two or three weeks until we have a definite time when we are supposed to meet so learning is not supposed to stop this session is a combination of data storytelling and data visualization um i'm going to cut the session into two so we are going to have the data storytelling class now then for i'm also going to repost another video for the data visualization class using power bi because that's hands on is practical um i'm not going to lump it up because if i do that we might not get um the hundred percent um value that we need from it all right without saying much it's going to be like a physical class it's just like the way we do the physical class i will play a video then i will move straight to what i want to talk about on data storytelling all right i'll start with this video once upon a time business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to innovate in. You. Right now, you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation, well, the list goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that could learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changers are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, Anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion, and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business models. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Humanity 
is where true and lasting value is created. We will engage, relate, and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'll just go straight to the point, and I'll be speaking to the future of work 2020, or 2022, rather. Um, it is. It has become clear that the future of work and skill um, lies in data and technology. So what am I trying to say? Um, you are looking at COVID-19 today and you are wondering, so what if I lose my job? How does data help me? Um, the good news is that data can help you to actually realign your thoughts and realign your skills to what people might want. I was speaking to some set of people today and um, I was telling them about how they can um, study what is happening right now and see how they can take advantage of it. So the whole idea is that I'm into a trade, I'm into a, a, a kind of creative um, skill. Um, however, because of what is happening, um, sales have dwindled and things are not going fine the way I want it to look like. So the question now is that when things like this happen, human needs and wants, they change. So what people are thinking right now is how to survive. And after um, the COVID-19 pandemic, hopefully, what people will be thinking about is how they can stabilize. So the question now is that what are you selling? What do you have right now? What skill do you have right now? Even if it is data analytics. And how can you use it to solve current issues and problems? All right. Um... The World Economic Forum identifies 2020 um, uh, growing skills. Number one, analytical thinking and innovation. And what I just said right now is basically um, one of what I'm trying to explain. Um, active learning and learning strategy. So you're expected to be learning, learning and learning. Learn more, know more, critical thinking and analysis, leadership and social influence. I'll just, I'm going to be sharing this slide with us. I want us to go through all this. And those jobs that in 2022 will be, will be important, those that will be declining, like um, accounting, bookkeeping, and payroll checks, because most of these things will be automated. All right. So this is a critical question I need us to ask ourselves. Ask yourself this. Is your current job role or skill in the top declining? If your job role is on that list of job top declining, you need to actually um, upskill yourself. And being here today, you are doing a very you've done a very great job in actually achieving this um training i will just go to our journey so far our journey so far we started with data introductions wow we've actually come a long way most of us do actually know this we started with data introductions having a clear understanding of data data types and how we can frame business problem using data we were introduced to our data tools from SQL to Python to Power BI and R. We started our 21 day challenge on SQL and our 12 days voice note dropped on the group on Know Your Data Lingo. Um, we closed out on the beginners class with our final assessment. We also did assessments for data introductions and assessments for our lingo. We commenced the intermediate class with a refresher course, variables, and um, from then on, we moved to data discovery, started with our first project on sales analysis, Mr. Chuku Distors. Then we moved to our second session, data exploration with um, our financial, our HR data sets. And our third project was given to us to do a combination of both for data discovery and exploration on financial analysis. And we also did some assessment around data discovery and exploration. Um, we also did our final assessments which actually gave us our star winner and also um not just the star winner our 
the winner for consistency definitely there are some groups that might not have that but for some streams we actually had that and right now we are on the last um session of the roadmap which is our closeout session which is a combination of our power bi training and um our data story telling training after this is done like i said we might have we have to have a class a physical class but if the physical class is not possible we'll use this online platform to learn everything we need to learn then i'm going to be sending a certificate to us for those of us that are not in lagos i will I have to ship your items to you all right let's go into the business of today data storytelling i'm sure we already know this data is facts statistics collected for reference or analysis data and numbers figures they are all organized and all so basically what is data storytelling i believe in the power of story a story is where we came from a story is where we are going a story is what connects us and binds us to each other a story is powerful when you say stories to people people tend to hear stories are so interesting that there are some movies that they've done so many years ago like eg the matrix some people still talk about that story today because in one way or the other it affects uh them or it has much more said something to them in one way or the other there's some movies that i've watched over time that when i remember or when i think about it i actually wish that things could be actually that way like the movie so i can remember when um the wakanda movie came out and um everybody wanted to watch that movie so people wanted to watch the movie not just because it was uh, uh, it, it spoke to um some sort of people just doing a movie but because it spoke to the african race somehow the future of africa somehow and we are directly linked to it as we are seated here in africa so it was something different and they've been seeing so many uh people have been seeing so many stars like um the one for from smallville the one from superman batman they are all white and it is like a new and refreshing thing people are moved by stories how do you tell stories when you're talking about data when you do data you are analyzing numbers your ability to be able to tell stories or to be able to speak in stories to your audience gives them that leverage or understanding of what or the implications of what data is it carries them along and gives them that urgency wherever it needs to be or where whatever it needs to be taken so that's why we need to understand how to tell data storytelling uh, stories rather if you remember during our session on the group we spoke about the five w's and the one h the who the why the where and um the how we spoke about how to frame business questions we are framing questions to know how to tell a story so if i ask who if i ask where it is towards a story and if I'm talking about the DIKW pyramid, the knowledge and the wisdom uh, on the pyramid, I expect that my stories should be powerful. So as I'm speaking a story using the who, the what, the where, the when, and the how, I should also be able to speak in numbers. I should be able to infuse numbers into it. That's why we have the knowledge statements and the wisdom statement, which speaks to powerful recommendations based on things that even your um stakeholder might not even have thought about so let's just go straight into today's topic crunching data is not enough you need to be able to tell stories so we have a graph showing us data the fact that we've been able to filter the data clean the data done so many times we've been able to visualize and present it on powerpoint and when we did that on powerpoint what we did was that we we're able to tell stories so what we did on powerpoint was to learn how to visualize our data visualize basic things that needs to be visualized and to be able to tell stories with that data so if you notice i i was so 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 um into us doing the right thing when it comes to knowledge and recommendation all right so introduction to data storytelling in the smallest nutshell how is it that organization or data visualization relates to cognition many of us get most of our information about the world through our eyes we have multiple senses we can breathe we can eat we can talk but before we actually 
start doing any of these things we see with our eyes our eyes tells us so many things in fact when you go to facebook you go to instagram you see a lot of posts you see people doing things it's from the eyes and it tells speaks to your brain that oh i think i need to also do this thing also so whenever we are doing a report or presentation it needs to speak to the eyes most times when you are looking at an analysis you look at the visuals first that's the chat so how the direction of your eyes basically is more of could be vertical horizontal or could even be zigzag so i want us to note that because now we're going to be working on a dashboard so if we are going to be telling the stories we should make that guide us on how we can arrange our dashboard we need to guide our stakeholders eyes to what is important what is what the story is and what we want them to notice understand and remember our stories must shake up conversations around service so quality efficiency reliability it's not just about doing crunching data sets the data set must make sense it's not just about combining one particular column to another column so if you are doing a sales analysis your major focus should be on sales it's not just about saying supermarkets um uh, occupation to supermarket products so while that is good for you to understand what the products or the uh, the product that each occupation they are doing the question now is that what sales what are the average sales or the number of sales or even the amount of sales we are making from this so our stories must solve problems it must shake up conversation it shouldn't be something that even you yourself when you are talking about it you shouldn't have anything to say if you can't say anything about a story then the story is not worth telling there are eight commandments of data storytelling the first is you have to begin with a question then the second end with an insight so if you notice we started with a question which says when we're doing our powerpoint um uh, presentation and that's why are we doing this so i asked the question the reason for our analysis begin with a question so when you know why you are doing an analysis it's easy for you to come up with an insight insight is a combination of data information knowledge and wisdom basically knowledge and wisdom in that um, pyramid tell a compelling story so some of us we just went to the point 50 percent of this is what is happening for this particular store but i said no you need to be able to tell me a story about it i want to know why those people are doing such or those particular uh, sample population that you have identified why, why they are doing what they are doing explain with visuals narrate with words and that's why we had the chats so when you're telling a story you don't just tell it to yourself you need to be able to narrate it with words and that's why i spoke about our dikw strategy which actually helps us to um narrate a word our data be honest and credible as an analyst or a business intelligence analyst everybody wants to listen to you even online people tend to want to look at data so you have to be honest and you have to be credible you can't just push out data sets that are not honest and credible because it can affect so many lives i'm going to use an example of covid 19 for example we have a lot of data flying around if those data they are not let us imagine that they are telling us right now that the number of cases on covid 19 is actually maybe fifty thousand. when in the real sense of it, it's actually one million so because people know that it's fifty thousand, they tend to take it lightly which um that's the people which this pandemic actually affect tend to take it like because look, okay the number of people that actually have this they are small compared to the total population of the whole world so you see people going around even social distancing will just be a thing of the mouth and people contacting this thing and people dying so when you are not honest and credible about your data is a problem be clear and be concise know and cater to your audience and provide context so i'll start with the first begin with a question like i said you have to start with the question why are you doing this analysis set up your story what is your audience going to learn so when you want to start a story about the data you need to ask yourself if i am going to do this if i'm going to work on the total sales by occupation what is my audience going to learn from this story does it make any sense does it answer any question does it help the stakeholder and with an insight like i said if you can't learn something useful from the data the story isn't worth telling 
if you know that when you're going to do an analysis and it doesn't make sense even to you that you're writing it you don't need to tell that story a story should come should be, you should be able to come up with knowledge statement and wisdom statement from the story tell a compelling story people remember stories not data take them on a journey take them on a journey you can start by saying that in the year 2020 this is what happened to mr chukwu distance however due to economic policies reduction in inflation rates mr chukwu experienced high sales or higher sales more than any year since it was it since it's commenced and most of the customers because that period was a booming period and a lot of customers too um they they needed so many household goods for um um for that period basically maybe due to some policies or something else they were able to stock up or they were able to buy more of the sachuku stores fruits and vegetables and now we are not doing as much as that currently because the times of two years ago or last year when they made a lot of sales on fruits and vegetables not where we are right now right now is a pandemic period and people are focusing more on proteinous goods so that means that or maybe fat fatty items so that means that mr chukudi stores should be able to should stock up his store with the with fatty items to be able to sell more so at this story that i just spoke about now is something that just came from my head the whole idea is that when i take you to a through a story it is easier for you to connect the dots from where you are coming from to where you are going so it could be that mr chukudi stores they were doing very well when it comes to a particular uh, occupation and a particular products in a particular year and because of a particular reason and because of maybe the environment but now they are not doing as much as that so you should be able to tell, take your orders via um a journey all right explain with visuals narrate with words we've learned that on power bi no sorry on powerpoint but we are going to do that on power bi Another thing we are going to be using Power BI to do is to learn how to present on Power BI. The interesting thing about our training is that when you work on PowerPoint, it's easy for you to do same on your Power BI. So what I was training you guys on on PowerPoint is how to tell stories. So when you are doing your Power BI, you are clicking because Power BI is online real time. It is easier for you to tell stories immediately because you have learned that act on the group already. So people understand metrics, strengths, and patterns better with visuals. Even us, like I said, our eyes, we see things with our eyes. We remember things with our eyes. Before we even taste a particular food, our eyes have, we have seen it with, we have eaten it with our eyes, basically. Use your words to add your voice to the data. And when you are presenting data, please, you should, your voice should sound strong. You shouldn't waver when you are presenting. You should be strong. You should... You should be sure of yourself. You should be sure that whatever you are saying is correct, and there should be this um, authority behind your voice when you are speaking. You are not shutting people down, but when you are speaking, you are speaking with, and uh, you are speaking from the point of knowledge. So that's what data does for you. Explain with visuals, narrate with words. Be honest and be credible. Like I said, our data is being or rather our insights are being used by various stakeholders it would be very nice if you give stakeholders an idea a truthful idea of what is actually happening because if you mislead people with data i mean the outcome could be very bad and very pathetic it's it might cause a lot of issues you can come up with very negative issues so clients want honesty they value honesty so please don't sugarcoat the negatives and don't mislead with fractioned data don't pick a particular data set and focus on it focus on everything that has to do with the data set that's why i always say that for every column on a data set you have an insight to back it up be clear and be concise remove everything that is not part of your story save the other bits for another day go straight to the point if you can remember during our um our session on the group when we we're talking about um the who the what the why the the ikw and i was saying that 
we should structure a particular statement based on data information knowledge and wisdom what i was trying to do then was that i wanted us to understand what it meant to be clear and what it meant to be concise i don't need everything from the story when i give us scenario questions your idea is that i wanted us to be able to see clearly what who the stakeholders are what the issues are save other bits for another time what we want as an analyst or the bi analyst you need to be able to sell say concise stories number seven know and cater to your audience who are your audience who are you talking to your audience basically they are your stakeholders if you can remember a critical component of the five w's and one h at the who so if the who who happens to be your stakeholder they are not interested in whatever insight you are trying to bring up i'm telling you that insight will not fly the who is so critical sometimes the who tells you this is the problem that i'm having this is then the next question is that what that you ask yourself is the what you don't ask what because it doesn't it's not about you right now as an analyst it's not about you it's about the who it's from the who you get the what and the what you get the why so please know and cater your audience understand their issues understand the problem most times you might be working on a data set that doesn't have anything to do with your domain knowledge so what do you do you do a lot of research you ask questions even from the do domain experts so that you yourself you can be a, you can become expert expert on that particular you can become an expert rather on that space and you are able to give high level summary of what your audience did and the last um on this is providing context as a business intelligence analyst you should be able to provide context for your data what do i mean you should be able to compare metrics over time like when i spoke about a time when mr chukudi was doing well and currently why he's not doing well and what he was doing there and why, why we can't do it now because time changes you should also look at your competitors please competitor analysis when you are doing your analysis for knowledge and wisdom you should also it's not just about the data look outside your data identify your competitors what are they doing what are other computers doing that mr chukudi is not doing or other hr analysts doing and i am not doing or financial analysts are doing that or football um platforms or football or so many platforms like that they are doing that i'm not doing so you should be able to identify competitors and provide recommendations for your clients who are the stakeholders you should also be able to rank your um rank the business or the analysis based on other useful information that you have outside competitor analysis very very important i'm going to share this slide with us i want us to go through the eight um rules of data storytelling and i want us to use these eight rules for the next stage of where we are going to so where we are going to next is power bi presentation and i would like us because after the power bi presentation we are going to be moved to the community where we are going to work on our dashboard we have some time to prepare for our dashboard i need everyone to work on their dashboard and post on the group analysis i'm going to post a sample of what other members have done before so i'll just round up today's class with the eight commandments of data storytelling we said we should begin with a question why are you doing this analysis and with an insight use your knowledge and wisdom statements perfectly tell a compelling story explain with visuals narrate with words be honest and be credible be clear and be concise know and cater to your audience provide context i want to say thank you for joining me into this class about uh, this class um before we move i would like to play a very important video on the future of where we are going to because after this class we are going to uh, um advanced analytics which will be a combination of machine learning ai introduction to statistics and r using data tools artificial intelligence harbinger of doom destroyer of jobs and pure science fiction in a world of fake news be careful what you believe in fact ai has been running in the background for over six 
50 years. And the robots haven't taken over just yet. In 1950, Alan Turing gave us the Turing test to gauge whether a machine could think like a person. Christopher Strachey created the first AI program in 1951. And in 1996, IBM's Deep Blue became the first chess-playing computer to defeat a reigning world champion. Today, AI is no longer the plaything of governments and corporations. It's an undeniable part of everyday life. From Google search and Spotify song recommendations to X-ray analysis and Alexa, machine learning is touching and augmenting every aspect of our lives. But this moment, right now, is unlike any other in the history of AI. We're heading towards a revolutionary transformation and the pace of change is accelerating. Imagine a world without traffic jams, where cars drive centimetres apart, freeing up road networks. Imagine safer streets, where AI help police officers predict with an accuracy of 98% whether a criminal will reoffend if released on bail. Imagine people living longer, healthier lives thanks to faster, more accurate diagnosis. Motor insurers that use real-time data to prevent tired drivers from having accidents. Banks using facial stress analysis to automatically detect ATM fraud. Virtual independent financial advisors that work proactively on your behalf 24-7 for free. Previously unthinkable levels of customer experience are the new normal. This is no longer the stuff of science fiction. This is quickly becoming the reality of AI. AI is already augmenting human functions, and its advance within business environments is truly exponential. Using AI to redefine financial products, processes, and growth is very much a consideration for now. For business leaders, there are strategic actions to be taken today that will help ensure your business is still relevant and competitive tomorrow. Virtual employees will augment the human workforce, freeing up people to do more satisfying, higher value tasks. Processes that once took whole days will take only minutes. And AI will soon be unlocking trapped value in your data. New markets will be created and existing ones redefined. Productivity will be transformed. The impact on your business and your customers will be revolutionary. With such a great opportunity comes an equal risk. Those slow to begin tactical AI projects now will ultimately be left behind. Whereas those who start their journey soon will reap the rewards. Now is the time to lay the foundations of your firm's AI-driven future. Advances in AI will not merely change the way financial service providers operate. They will revolutionize the lives of stakeholders, customers, and employees forever. And the first to move will become the leaders. So let me ask you this. Do you want to embrace AI now or wait for your competitors to embrace it first so you're left behind? AI is here. Where are you? Wow. So where are you? Um, we have come to the end of today's session on data storytelling. I want to appreciate you all for being part of today's session. And I want you to go back, go through everything that we have spoken today. The future is in data, artificial intelligence, robotics. And you should be able to speak a story that people can understand. It's not just about speaking the big languages. Thank you very much for listening and have a nice day.